All right, guys, the DPMS SBR from Crossman is finally here. Uh, super excited. This has been probably one of the most hotly anticipated guns this year. Announced at SHOT Show, of course. A lot of very cool, interesting features. Going to make this gun a hell of a lot of fun for the backyard plinker out there. Let's check it out in a little bit more detail. So starting at the front of the DPMS SBR, we have a, kind of a faux muzzle brake just to add to the look there. Uh, and then rolling back into the handguard, guys, you'll notice that the gun honestly looks like it is full metal, although this is a glass bedded polymer. So it's very strong, very resilient, but it is not metal. Now that's gonna help with the weight. This gun's about six and a half pounds. Uh, and I'll be honest with you guys, any heavier in this thing wouldn't be as much fun to shoot as it is and would probably kill a lot of that recoil because this gun does have blowback. So moving to the handguard, guys, we do have a quad rail system. You can see there we have rails on all four sides there. Uh, gun does come with a foregrip here, uh, which is actually really convenient. Of course, you can adjust it on the Picatinny rail here if you like. Uh, but really like it, you know, you got a couple places you can grip the gun comfortably with it. Uh, so nice there. Of course, you could take it off and replace it with something else if you so desire. Uh, but you have room for lights, lasers, optics, whatever the heck you want. Uh, got a lot of kind of room to play with this gun and customize it and make it your own, which I love. So moving up top, guys, we do have a standard front and rear flip-up sight. Uh, these aren't spring-loaded, so you do have to flip them up and down by hand, but a good height to them should co-witness with a lot of red dots really nicely. Uh, the front sight, totally unadjustable, and the rear sight is windage adjustable only. Now, you do have uh, two aperture sizes here, just like most standard AR sight sets you do. Uh, have a finer aperture here in the back, and that flips down, revealing your larger aperture. Really easy to work with. Um, quite honestly, not my favorite set of sights here after using them a little bit, uh, but certainly good enough to get you going. So talking about the controls on the gun, pretty much everything, uh, with the exception of the forward assist, functions like a rear real AR M4 variant, uh, which is really cool, guys. Uh, you know, for being that polymer frame, uh, not actually full metal, this gun has the real feel of the real steel thing. So um, very cool gun. So obviously we have our magazine release. Now you'll notice the magazine does not drop free. Uh, you do actually have to pull it out. That's all right by me, not a big deal. Um, we do have a charging handle that does actually cock the gun. So that is very necessary and you will notice Dust cover flips open there. Um, if we had a mag in it, guys, this would actually lock back. So you can see that the bolt set actually moves, all right? And that's where your blowback's coming from. It's that internal movement giving you that real feel when you shoot it, which is really unique. And flipping it around to the other side, guys, of course, we do have our bolt release or bolt catch, whatever you prefer to call it here. Um, so you can just, you know, slap that in when you throw a new mag in and you are going to have that bolt forward and ready to shoot right away. And of course, our selector switch. So we have it on safe here now, semi-auto and then full auto all the way to the back. And yes, you guys heard me right, full auto. Uh, the magazines hold 25 rounds and you can dump them as fast as you want. Badass. And rounding it out at the back, guys, of course, a six position adjustable buttstock. Uh, kind of unique in the way this one adjusts here. We have this little tab right here that you are going to go ahead, press in, and then you can slide it forward and back. And you can feel it detent, lock into position. Uh, but cool thing about this, this does come all the way off. It overall feels really good, keeps a nice short profile. Uh, you're talking about going from about 27 inches to about 30 and a half inches. Uh, so this will accommodate, you know, your junior shooters or your grown adults as well. Uh, not going to be a problem for folks of all shapes and sizes. So one of the other really cool features of the DPMS SBR is your ability to break it down just like the real thing. So in order to do that, first things first, we're going to remove the magazine, make sure it's clear. All right, all good. Now we're going to decock it. If you leave it cocked, uh, everything's under spring tension inside. You don't want to do that. So simply pull the trigger and we are good to go now. So put it back on safe. So you are going to notice two pins right here, guys. Uh, I need a little bit of an Allen key to help me along here, but we're just going to push these in as far as we can. And then I'm just going to take an Allen key and give them a little bit extra just to help me get them out. All right. So we can actually fully remove the front one. Now, normally on your real ARs, this is gonna typically have some kind of detent right here holding it in place. So be aware that that is gonna come out all the way. And then our rear one is actually held in with that detent. So now that we have it apart, 
So we have our upper and lower receivers here. Obviously, we can put the lower down. Uh, you're not really going to ever need the lower for anything, maybe if you change out a grip or the butt stock, and it does look like you can do both. I can actually verify that you can replace the grip if you so choose. Uh, there are a couple springs in there, so something to be aware of. But as far as the upper goes, uh, this is going to be great for clearing a jam, all right? So everything comes out of this just like the real deal. You pull that out, and then... Simply pull the charging handle out and everything inside kind of slides back and you can see uh, we got a nice seal there for our blowback mechanism it looks like. And this guy is retained inside of there and you can kind of get to the barrel really easily here. Um, so if you did need to clear a jam obviously you're going to put a rod in from the muzzle end and push that BB out something to that effect. It really not going to be necessary to take it down and break it apart unless you do have a jam or something like that. All right, guys, so now we are going to get everything put back together properly here. And we are going to go ahead and show you guys how to load up CO2 and BBs into the magazines. So the magazines on the DPM SSBR got a lot of weight to them. That's going to give you a lot of that real feel here. Uh, but a few tips and tricks here when you're loading them. Pay attention, all right? They printed some words on the magazine for a reason. So you see, guys, here it says open. So you're going to take that and press up. This whole cover comes off, and you will notice a couple things. Number one, you have an Allen key included, and this kind of sets right in to the magazine and stays there. So this is really nice. So we are going to take our CO2. First, let me get these screws backed out so we can actually get them in. Got some Crossman CO2 here. We are just going to drop them in nice and easy. The next thing you're going to notice, and this one is really important, guys, right here, okay? It says first. That means you got to pierce the, I guess, the left-hand CO2 cartridge first, okay? So we are going to do that. If you pierce the right one first, guys, it is all going to leak out. So it's going to be a wasted cartridge. So follow the instructions, all right? So you guys just heard it pierce. We are good to go there. Now we are gonna go ahead and do the right one. Now the cool thing about this, guys, is that you can run this gun on just one CO2 cartridge if you wanted to. Awesome feature there as well. So now that we have our CO2 loaded in, we're just gonna replace our Allen key there, pop the cover back on, and now we're gonna load BBs. So now that we have CO2 in the magazine, we're gonna go ahead and load up some BBs. Now, uh, guys, one of my biggest pet peeves with any CO2 gun is when the follower doesn't have something to retain it. All right, so uh, upon initial inspection, when I got this gun, I was not happy, okay? Um, my thumb was getting chewed up, and then I realized that Crossman included a speed loader. Um, this is huge, all right? So, I, you know, not a lot of guns come with this, um, but in terms of the operation of the speed loader, this one's pretty unique and going to be very helpful in saving your guys' thumbs from getting ripped up. So it's going to come just like this. You take this tab here, you press it over, and your feeder is going to pop up. What that's also going to do is allow you to open the back door there for the speed loader so we can actually put BBs in it. Got some Air Venturi steels in here. You just go ahead and pour them in, guys. So you'll notice that we have this kind of contraption on the end here. What this does is actually allows us to pull our follower back. So we simply slide this guy in here and he's gonna drop down. And you'll notice now our feeder for the speed loader is lined up directly with the feed hole on the magazine. So we're just gonna rock it forward and press. And you guys can see BB's going into the magazine. All right, guys, so once you get all of them loaded, we'll stop it there. That's good enough. Um, but 25 rounds, you know, the speed loader is going to come in handy a lot, guys. Um, these aren't perfect. You know, they do get jammed up sometimes, uh, but certainly better than holding this thing back with your finger and trying to just drop BBs in there. So uh, big ups to Crossman. Great addition there. Uh, now we are going to head out to the range, do some chronograph work. We are going to obviously test the gun for accuracy. Semi-auto only, full auto is just going to be a spray and pray kind of deal. Um, and then we are going to take a full shot count on both semi and full auto for you guys. Let's see what happens. Let's get out there. All right, guys, so it dawns on me that maybe not everybody is familiar with how an AR-15 or M4 platform firearm works uh, because the DPMS functions basically the same way. So, um, in terms of what you would do when you are ready to shoot this guy, you have BBs in the mag, you have CO2 in the mag, you're going to load the magazine into the bottom, make sure it locked into place, you're not able to pull it out, okay? Uh, next thing you're going to go ahead and do is pull back the charging handle, okay? So you're going to make sure you get in on that pin there, pull it all the way back, and release. Very easy to do. Uh, you pull that back and you are ready to go, all right? So now we're going to take it off safe, now either you're into semi-automatic, or full automatic, I'm gonna run it in full just so you see real quick. 
All right, now what you'll notice here, you notice how it just stopped, right? I have fresh CO2 in this gun. That is because this functions exactly like the real thing. All right, the bolt has actually caught open and you have your bolt catch here popped out a little bit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna change out our mags. I'm gonna pull that mag out, put a fresh one with more BBs in there, pop it in. Now I don't have to rack that charging handle again. I can, but it's a lot easier if you just pop that bolt catch right like that and then you're back in the game and ready to shoot. Simple as that, guys. All right, guys, so before we take a look at these accuracy results, uh, we we're gonna do full auto, but honestly, guys, it's a bit of a crapshoot when you start running this thing. Uh, with the blowback full auto, it just kind of sprays BBs everywhere. It's a lot of fun, but that's not a real test of what this gun's capable of accuracy-wise. So we're gonna stick to semi-auto. Uh, starting with the Dust Devils, our fastest BB, of course, as they are the lightest, uh, 470 feet per second or so. Uh, 10 shots in about a four and a half inch group, not very good, but eight of those 10 in two inches, which is not too bad at all. Could have certainly been me, uh, but still two inches for eight of 10, not terrible. Moving to smart shots, which are our slowest BB, 330 feet per second or so. Uh, they are certainly the heaviest though, keep that in mind. Uh, all 10 shots in about three inches, and then you got nine out of 10 in an inch and a half down here. So not too bad, certainly improving accuracy wise. And then our steel BBs right at about 400 feet per second, all 10 in an inch and three quarters, guys. Uh, very, very good accuracy. We are gonna now go ahead and take our steel BBs, these Air Venturi BBs, go ahead and do shot counts on both semi-auto and full auto, give you guys an idea of how many shots you're gonna get per your two CO2 cartridges. Let's check it out. All right, guys, so with steel BBs, shot count numbers, looking at about seven mags, 175 shots a piece. Uh, this represents our semi-auto target here and our full auto target here. Now, I will say the full auto target, when we were done with that seventh mag, it was out of CO2, totally done. Whereas we still had a little bit left in the semi-auto mag here, but it was falling way off the paper, so we decided to call it. Uh, you could definitely feel that, that kickback, that blowback get weak, right around 125 to 150, somewhere in that fifth or sixth magazine. Uh, just so you guys know, we're taking about one shot a second, and it's about 80 degrees here on our indoor range. So something to keep in mind, but a lot of shots, guys, 150 plus out of the DPMS SBR. Very good. All right, guys, so the DPM SSBR, obviously this gun's a ton of fun. Uh, we put like 2,000 rounds through testing it here. I, I can't put this thing down. This is a lot of fun, and having the ability to go full auto is absolutely fantastic. I really think Crossman nailed it on this gun. Um, you know, with the blowback and everything, the gun has, for us, functioned flawlessly, guys. Um, and that is saying a lot for a sub $200 CO2 gun, uh, especially with all the features that this one has. Uh, personally, I'd like to see a different sight set on here. Uh, I'd probably go ahead and, uh, and mount a red dot uh, or replace the open sights. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of 
not fully adjustable sight sets and the front post sight just doesn't agree with my eyes for some reason, uh, but certainly good enough to get you shooting right out of the box. I think this speed loader was absolutely genius, you know, having something that pulls back the follower on the mags for you so you don't have to burn up your thumbs and everything uh, is a big one and I think Crossman did quite well with that. Uh, you get yourself some steel BBs, you know, those are going to be most accurate for you probably, but the Dust Devils, the smart shots out there, that's going to allow you to get that real steel feel for training purposes, uh, or if you're looking to familiarize someone who is maybe not familiar with an AR type of platform, this is going to be a really good option uh, to get them familiar with the functions, the controls, and even to some extent that feel with that blowback action. Uh, so the Crossman DPMS is definitely a winner in my book, guys. Uh, definitely one you should check out if you're looking to have some fun this summer with a CO2 BB gun. Uh, don't forget to check it out next time you are on PyramidAir.com. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys at the next one.